Hi guys, this is Prague ICU, and in this presentation we'll give you more useful information about lung ultrasound. In terms of lung assessment, we have different diagnostic options. Physical examination is insufficient for clinical diagnosis. X-ray possesses limited accuracy. There is limited access of CT, and there are risks related to transport. Compared to previously mentioned approaches, lung ultrasound is available at the bedside, can be performed serially, is low cost, and avoids ionizing radiation. Lung ultrasound has been widely adopted as a diagnostic modality in ICU in the last decade, also thanks to its pioneer, Dr. Lichtenstein. Lung ultrasound has been validated as a modality with an excellent sensitivity and specificity compared to CT. We need to mention the BLUE protocol as a tool for differential diagnosis in a patient with respiratory insufficiency. This is a scheme of the BLUE protocol that helps us to establish a diagnosis that might correspond to patient dyspnea. Which transducer can we use for lung examination? There is linear probe, the vascular probe, which is high frequency, has lower penetration, but has great image quality. Then we have curvilinear probe, abdominal probe, which is low frequency, has higher penetration, but loose image quality. And finally, face to ray probe, cardiac probe, which is low frequency, has higher penetration, but loose image quality. We can use different approaches in terms of number of scan zones. Basically, the more zones we scan, the more detailed result will we get. First of all, we can mention approach that analyzes up to 28 zones, 6 in the right hemithorax and 12 on the left side. In contrast, Blue Protocol is based on 12 scanning zones, like as we show in our video. Anterior, lateral, posterior zones are divided to superior and inferior parts. Finally, in POCUS guidelines, four standard areas of each hemithorax are identified relative to the sternum and anterior axillary line. In critically ill patients, we can also quantify the lung ultrasound score. Again, we scan 12 zones as in a blue protocol. Each zone is numerically characterized. The cumulative lung ultrasound score corresponds to the sum of each examined region score. Minimum score, normal lungs, has zero points, whereas maximum score, in case that both lungs are consolidated, 36 points. So how does the normally health lung should look like? When placing vascular probe in longitudinal axis, perpendicular to ribs, we look for a bad sign to confirm that we are looking at lung and pleura as opposed to chest wall. A-lines are transverse normal reverberation artifacts of the pleura. A-lines are represented in normally aerated lung. Again, big arrow corresponds to pleural sliding, the hyperechoic line. Smaller arrows correspond to A-lines that indicate normal aerated lung. A-lines are horizontal reverberation artifact lines originating from the visceral pleura. Here is the detail of lung sliding. Lung sliding has been described as a shimmering appearance of the pleura, or like tiny ants marching on a string. Lung sliding sign represents sliding of the visceral over the parietal pleura. On a mode, the classical sign of normally aerated lungs is a seashore sign. The motionless superficial layers generate horizontal lines, the waves. The deep artifact follow the lung sliding, hence the sandy pattern. Another sign of normally aerated lung is the presence of lung pulse, which is the rhythmic movement of the pleuras in synchrony with the cardiac rhythm. See green arrows after each QRS complex. Now we will look on how to diagnose a pneumothorax. The main sign of pneumothorax is absence of lung sliding on 2D echo, as you can see on the left video. Moreover, on M mode we can't see a seashore sign, but we can see the barcode or stratosphere sign. Clear evidence of pneumothorax is the presence of lung point, which is represented by lung sliding and absence of lung sliding on one image. Here we can see the presence and absence of lung sliding next to each other. 
Next slide shows overview of M mode appearance in normal lung, seashore sign and in pneumothorax, barcode, stratosphere sign. We can proceed to another pathological finding, which are beelines. Beelines are hyperechoic comic tail artifacts. They imply high lung water. They are arising from the pleural line. Less than three are of no significance. They are extending indefinitely, erasing A-lines and moving in direction with lung sliding. B-lines are vertical hyperechoic cometalar verbation artifacts that arise from the pleural line. Three and more B-lines indicate increased density or fluid. We should also be aware of Z-lines, which are short, broad, vertical comets arising from the pleura and not reaching the distal edge of the screen. They do not erase A-lines. B-lines are present in lung congestion, pulmonary edema, ARDS or pneumonia. In a critically ill patient, it's very important to differentiate B-lines, which are related to pulmonary edema or inflammatory lung disease. In pulmonary edema, there are no consolidations. There is normal lung sliding. B-lines are diffuse and homogeneous in their presence. There is thin soft pleura. There is absence of lung pulse and there are appropriate echo findings. Compared to ARDS, in ARDS there are lung consolidations, there is decreased lung sliding, there is no homogeneous distribution of B-lines, there are some spared areas, there are abnormalities of pleura and there is intermittent lung pulse. On this image we can see an example of consolidation compared to normal lung Consolidation on ultrasound has a relatively hypoechoic, heterogeneous echo texture. Another image of a lung consolidation, here also with a paraneumonic pleural effusion. For pleural effusion evaluation, we always use the echo or abdominal probe. The maximum of fluid might be appreciated in PLAPS point, posterior and lateral alveolar and pleural syndrome point. For estimation of fluid volume, we can use the formula 20 times maximal distance between parietal and visceral pleura in end expiration. Lung ultrasound became extremely useful, particularly in current COVID era. It is safe and low-cost procedure. It provides fast initial assessment. It can help us to assess the response to therapy in proning on in ECMO patients or during weaning of mechanical ventilation. So, how can we differentiate COVID patients using lung ultrasound? What are typical signs of COVID on lung ultrasound? Most prevalent pathological changes are present in posterior areas of bow lungs, lower lobes predominantly. B lines are confluent, not mobile. Irregular thickened pleura is present. Also, subpleural consolidations. Air bronchograms are present as well as part of consolidation and they are thickened interlobular septa, so-called crazy paving. Typical picture of confluent beelines, waterfall sign. Here we can appreciate typical subpleural consolidations. And finally, here we can see dynamic air bronchograms that move centrifugally with respiration they represent fluid mixed with air inside large bronchi. They indicate a non-retractile consolidation. Thank you for watching our lung ultrasound presentation and we are looking forward to welcome you back on Prague ICU soon.